Yo, cool announcement before the video. If you want to watch me play live, I'm going on another live stream on September 26th. Actually the same stream as this video. It's TCH Live. Be there or be there. You, you literally don't have a second out. Just fuck, just show up, dude. They say everything's bigger in Texas, but how big could it possibly be? I mean, it's just two five, right? Nope, how about 2, 5, 10, 25, 50, 100? What the fuck? So how did we even get here? A few months ago, my buddy asked if I wanted to play poker in Texas. I said, absolutely. Then he asked if I wanted to drive, to which I said, absolutely not, and booked a flight like a normal fucking human. So this is my first time ever playing on live stream. I mean, I'd be lying to you if I said that I wasn't a little nervous. Honestly, I'd be really shocked if anyone works on their poker game more than me or Corey. So I'm prepared as, you know, Tom Brady in a fucking Super Bowl. Like, I expect to win. That's pretty much it. It's game time. We pull up to Texas Card House and adrenaline is pumping. I walk through the door hoping to god my teeth don't get kicked in. I buy in for $2,000, but this number won't last long. I sit down at the table and get ready for war. I think the biggest thing going into today is I just don't want to dust money in front of every family member and friend watching. My mom and dad watch these videos, so what I would hate to see is firsthand I'm like, I'm all in, get snap called by the nuts, my mom's like, oh my god! And we're just down 2,000. That would be a catastrophe. Enough talking. We take our seat and get into some of the biggest hands I've ever seen at a 2-5 game. I was almost hoping for the first orbit or two I wouldn't get anything playable so I can adapt, see how people play. Nope. First orbit. I looked down at 6-5 of hearts in the blinds. I'm like, shit. I have to play this. <laughs> Button limps. Small blind raises to $55. I think... <sighs> Oh god, here we go. I make the call. Cutoff said I have no business being here. He folds, and we go heads up to a flop of 9542 hearts. My actual heart is about to beat out of my chest. Small blind bets 60. I'm thinking, dude, my heart is serious. I'm gonna die here on stream. This board should favor me as the preflop caller, so I guess you could raise, but I'd rather do that with other hands for reasons I won't really get into. It's nerdy shit. I start with a call. The turn comes the three of clubs. We pick up even more outs, and it, my heart rate increases even more. I'm seriously thinking, dude, I'm actually gonna die. Small blind slows down and checks. This is really good news. I think I'm gonna have the best hand here a lot. I want to place a bet trying to get value from hands like ace high, which means I should go small, but I was not thinking clearly. I threw out $140, which is way too big. I like a sizing of like 60 or 75, but as played, he makes the fold. Phew, we take down a pot. Now I can relax for a bit, fold some hands, see how people play and get used to being on camera. The literal next shuffle, we look down at, Jesus Christ, we look down at pocket tens. Oh my God. That whole theory of learning the players before getting involved, Burned in a house fire. See you never. Lojack raises to $35. Then the cutoff calls. Well, I may be nervous, but I didn't fly all the way out to Texas to play like a bitch. I three bet to $175. The straddler cold calls. Um, that's really concerning. Then the hijack calls. Then the cutoff calls. Five minutes into stream, we're going four ways in a three bet pot and I'm in the worst position. What the fuck is going on? Flop comes 9-3 deuce, two spades. The poker gods immediately bless me with just about the best board you could ask for with pocket tens. I start off with a c-bet of $225. No need to go too large, just looking to get value from any 9x, weaker non-believing pairs, or flush draws. I'm also betting for protection against random overcards, cause if this checked around and a face card comes in the turn, that'd feel like a kick in the balls. Action folds to the original Razor, who makes the call. Cutoff gets out of the way, so we go heads up to a turn, which comes off the Eight of Diamonds. Not the best card, as a hand like 9-8 now improves to two pair, and pocket eights improves to a set. I decide to exercise a bit of pot control and check. Hijack checks it back. 
This is great because I think you'd bet jacks are better for value. And since he checked, it indicates some form of showdown value that we're most likely ahead of. In the moment, I should have taken note of this, but honestly, my brain was half deer in headlights, half SpongeBob running around with file cabinets on fire. Wasn't really thinking about the hand, more so just nervous about playing on stream. River comes the five of diamonds. Here, I really like a $600 bet. Repping missed draws and stuff like that, but as played, I pussy out and check, and the low jack checks back. I show pocket tens, and I felt like the world's biggest bitch. I get one straight of value, and I'm like, oh man, I am I suck at this game. Next, we have ace queen offsuit and under the gun plus one. I raise the thirty dollars. Button calls. Then the small blind three bets to a hundred ten. I thought this was weak because of the small sizing, especially with the button in there. I considered four betting to three thirty, but I figured if an ace came in the flop, then he'd barrel into me, and I'd get a lot more value that way. I decide to call, and the button comes along as well. Flop comes legitimate dust. No fairies, no pixie dust, just straight dust. Small blind bets 150. I get the hell out of dodge. Watch how the rest of this hand plays out. Button makes the call. Turn comes a 9. Small blind bets once again. Button raises to 775 and gets beaten into the pot. Legitimately snap called. River peels off a jack. Action goes check, check, and a 7 takes it down. When I saw this, I thought, wow. I made a mental note in my head that this guy likes to get freaky deaky. This guy has balls bigger than an elephant, and uh, this guy doesn't care about winning a pot. What a fucking fish. A lot of carefree behavior as we move into this next hand, where we look down at pocket 10s yet again. I I'm getting deja vu. Middle position raises to 30. Low jack calls and the cutoff calls. Let's, uh, let's try this again. I 3-bet to $210. The middle position and low jack make the call. This time, the cutoff wants none of it and gets out of the way. Still going three ways to a flop, which comes jack 5-5. Five, five. I have second pair on a board that won't really connect much with me. Plus, there are two players behind me. I decide to check, see what they do. Middle position checks as well, and the low jack decides to bet $175. I think low jack could be betting for protection here with any lower pair, because a lot of holdings like suited connectors, overcards, and a bunch of stuff is going to totally whiff on a board like this. I look up at him and ask, do you have any blacks? He shakes his head, and I say, hmm, no blacks, okay, okay. Since I could still have the best hand here, I decide to make the call. Middle position thinks that's a great idea, because he also calls. Kind of concerning that he's in here still on such a dry board. At this point, I'm pretty confident that at least one of these two players has a jack. Still going three ways to a turn card, which comes the seven of diamonds. Action once again checks to the low jack, who continues betting, this time $350. When he bets the flop and gets called by two people, then bets again, that's really strong. I no longer think he has lower pairs as those would check back. He could have pocket sevens that improve to a boat, but honestly, the hand that makes the most sense is one containing a five. He bet flop, got called by me and middle position, got checked to again, and he's like, guys, I have three of the same number. I can't, I, I, I have to bet this. Low jack also called flop, which means he's probably the one that has the jack. Here I am with my measly tens. I think I'm in third place. I decide to get out of the way but the low jack once again makes the call. River comes an absolute brick. Middle position checks a third time. The low jack jams in his mouth. Middle position tank calls and gets shown a five. He's like, Fuck. Around this time, the stack started getting deeper, so I reached into my wallet, said you guys are not gonna bully me today. I add on for another 1.9K, in for 3.9, joining the big boys club. In this next hand, there's not one, not two, but three straddles. We're playing two, five, ten, twenty-five, fifty. Jesus Christ. I asked, I said, is that a triple straddle? They're like, yeah. I give a slight nod in confirmation. I'm thinking, yeah, okay, this is really happening. I I, I make a standard open to $150. Just a casual 2-5 game going on here. Action folds to the triple straddler who makes the call. Flop comes queen 10-7, all diamonds. 
This triple straddler leads right out for $200. Well, this is interesting. I don't think he's ever going to be doing this with a flopped flush. I think hands of that nature would probably want to check raise considering we're so deep. He could have a queen that's betting for protection, could have, I guess, two pair. Or I think he could have a hand like six, five of clubs that completely whiffed and is just trying to steal the pot. For those reasons, I think it's mandatory to call one street. So that's what I do. The dealer didn't recognize that action had completed, so I went pew pew, shot on my 200 and said, let's see a turn card, please. He's like, listen, buddy, give me a fucking second, will ya? <laughs> and we go off to a turn card, which comes another seven. The triple straddler bets once again, this time $400. Not really in love with the idea of chasing straights when the board is paired, especially when there's three diamonds on board. Could have been drawing dead from the get-go, so I, I just snap fold. The triple straddler's like, dude, I have another boat. I don't know what's going on. And I said, nice, nice hand. Nice, that's, that, that beats what I had. A few minutes later, we looked down at ace-king offsuit in the low jack. I raised the $30. The big blind and straddler make the call. Flop comes a bit above average. It's ace-king nine with two spades. Action checks to me. I place a bet of $50, figuring I'm going to get called by any ace, any flush draw, maybe even any king. Unfortunately, you can see the opponents flopped absolute cow manure, so they obviously both fold. I don't hate my bet. I guess you could check in this case, and hopefully one of them blasts off. But is what it is. We move on to the next hand. I recommend you fasten your seatbelts, buckle up, because this next one gets a bit spicy. We look down at pocket fives in early position. There's a double straddle on. We're playing two, five, 10, 20. First to act raises to $65. This hand, I really don't want to fold. However, I also don't want a flat call because I become literal bait for a shark to say, yeah, buddy, I'm going to three bet to some absurd amount and just force you out of this hand. Don't want to fold. Don't want to call. That leaves one option left on the table. I reach for chips to three bet and everything sticks together. They're like, no, don't punt me. No. I tell them, shut up, kids. Go in the middle. I three bet to $190. Another perk of three betting a pocket pair like this is if you flop a set, it's going to be super disguised. Say the flop comes king five six and the guy has king queen or ace king. He's probably going to call three streets. I'll jam on the river, get snap called and say, I have a set of fives. He's like, what the fuck? That's the thought process for three betting a hand like this. Action folds to my buddy Matt, who ends up cold calling. That's quite alarming. My buddy Matt is a borderline knit. He, he's tight. Action folds back to the original Razor, who also makes the call. I'm just hoping to God that I flop a set, which is never going to come, because as you can see, one of the other players folded pocket fives. That's great. All of our outs are dead, going to a flop with zero hope. It comes King Jack 3. Original Razor checks to me. Our actual holding is dog piss. But we could have a lot of strong holdings here. We could have ace queen, pocket queens, pocket jacks, aces, kings. That's quite a lot of strong holdings we can represent. Also, I didn't get three bets, so we can rule out our opponents having aces, kings, probably queens. Sure, Matt might have a hand like pocket jacks, but if he does, we'll hear about it quite quickly. He could also have tens, nines, eights. All of those are going to fold because there are two overcards on board. I think the guy to my right could also have a hand like Ace-X. I don't know. This board should theoretically favor me a lot, so I place a C-bet of $225. Matt begins to stare at me. I can tell he's contemplating a call. I glance at him, then glance away. In my head, I'm thinking, oh god, please don't call. Please don't call. After 15 seconds, Matt says, all right, fine, Corey, I'll fold. I'm like, whoo! Original Razor also lets it go. We squeak this one through and pick up a nice profit. That play right there netted $400. Kind of crazy how swings like that can occur in just one hand. This next hand is easily the hand of the night. Once again, we're playing 2 5 10 20. Cut off limps and the small blind raises to $100. We have 10 8 of diamonds in the big blind. 
the cutoff has a short stack, only around 300 total. So I am really, really concerned that if I call here and action folds to the cutoff, he's going to jam. The small blind will re-raise and I'll have to fold and just torch $100. But I just decide to make the call and cross my fingers that the cutoff doesn't, you know, put it all in there. The straddler also calls. The cutoff fires his cards into the muck so fast that the viewer didn't even see it. <laughs> yeah, the, the cutoff folds. We're going three ways to a flop of ace, nine, four, two diamonds. We flop a flush draw, and even better, the small blind checks to me. When the small blind checks, I don't think he's going to have an ace very often at all, as I think those would want to charge the obvious flush draw and 9x holdings. However, I think I can have a lot of strong holdings on this board. I could have pocket fours, ace nine, ace four. If I had any of those holdings, I would obviously want to put in a bet. So I start off with a bet of $140. The straddler calls, and the original raiser folds. Going off to a turn card, which comes probably the best one in the deck. It is the Jack of Hearts. We have 10 high, but my god, do we have a dream? If I place a bet here, the Straddler's going to fold a lot of the hands that he called the flop with. I decide to place a bet of $450, making it look like a value size, charging draws and other stuff like that. Straddler doesn't think for too long before making the call. Going off to see one last card, which comes absolute gin. It's the Queen of Hearts. Oh my god, we river the essential nuts. For anyone who's like, Oh, Corey, that's not the nuts. King 10 is the nuts. <laughs> no one is ever going to arrive with King 10 in this situation, other than King 10 of Diamonds, which we block. So yeah, we have the nuts here. Once we get called on the flop and turn, I'm pretty sure the straddler has a hand like Ace-X, maybe even two pair at this point. If I had a miss flush draw, like 10-7 of diamonds, for example, blocking straights, I'd want to bet big, repping two pair or a straight, putting a lot of pressure on Ace-X. So, obviously, when I have a really strong hand, I'm going to pot that bitch. I release three flamingos into the pond, let three pink birds fly into the wind, will ya? The straddler snap calls. I flip over my hand, and the straddler lets out one big emphatic, wow. <laughs> he pounds the table and says, nice hand, man. And I said, thanks. We take down a massive pot. I think we got absolute max value on that one. Very happy with how I played it. By the end of stream, stack sizes looked like this. I think TM walked away with a profit of 9,000. Really good day for him. That was the last interesting hand of the night. We played off stream for about an hour, dwindled down 400. End of the night, up 2.1k. Certainly a win that we'll take. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to tune in on Monday. See you in the next one.